I would uh, almost certainly say no to allowing this to be taken over. Next Pira is owned, as you said, by Wingtech. Wingtech are uh, massively financed and invested in by uh, various parts of the Chinese government. The Chinese banking system, the Chinese business system uh, is completely beholden uh, to the Chinese government under the security laws. Any data they have has to be uh, reported back and transferred at request uh, to the security organizations. And um, they are, uh, China itself has made a real effort to try and glean this technology. The one area that they have a problem with is in the microprocessor area, where the US still has a lead and the West generally has a lead over them. <clears throat> of course, they've got their greedy eyes on Taiwan, and Taiwan uh, is one of the biggest producers uh, of microprocessors. The US has asked them to restrict any of their exports now uh, to. Uh, China and in the US, such a takeover would now be blocked. Absolutely certainly. Uh, the truth is that China poses a direct threat now uh, to the uh, to the West. Uh, it's n the nature of its government and its egregious determination to dominate in these areas is all down to the fact that it knows full well that the West needs all of these technologies. You know, if you take all this together, it's not just the takeover uh, of wafer fab. And in fact, if you look at China, China has. 80% of the rare earth mines has the world's biggest production capability for rare earth materials. So the West has to go there. The West has been asleep on the watch on this one. And it produces pretty much anything, everything from plastic pots uh, to the computer that I'm uh, talking to you on at the moment. And all of these things pose a real problem for us uh, as their economic dominance and power means that they're able, therefore, where they would wish to, to put real constraints on us. And we are not strategically sensible about this. You know, they, rather like Russia, are a government that determines that their form of government is right, and therefore they are selling that through the Belt and Road Project to all the developing world. So we have a serious wake-up uh, to take place in this. And the final point to make is it's not just here, of course. They are flooding our universities with money, uh, huge amounts of money. Uh, many of those postgrad students end up on technology projects to do with defense programs, and the Americans are now already made it clear that they're concerned about the open door nature uh, of our university system and the way in which quite a lot of that money is debauching the whole uh, 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 attitude, I suppose, uh, to the nature of the Chinese government and the suppression of debates in universities. So these are big, big issues of which this is one part. But certainly, if this was America, this would be blocked. And you are joining us indeed from the States, uh, Sir Ian, and we're grateful to you for getting up bright and early to Join us here on The Money. Dominic, you often write about tech. You're a financial writer who likes to get into the, the nitty-gritty of subjects. What do you make of this, the fact that the ownership of our largest semiconductor factory hangs in the balance with parts of the government reluctant to do anything about the prospect of Chinese control? Well, I, I'm sorry that it doesn't make good TV, but I have to say I agree with every word that Ian's just said. Um, <laughs> the nature of, of globalization is that everyone's friends, and so it's fine to outsource everything. But um, of course, when the world goes to war, then the implications of that are very different. And, you know, we've seen a huge turning point in global geopolitics uh, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and we've seen it's exposed just how dependent um, Germany in particular, Austria, Italy is on um, Russian natural gas and how the stupidity, if you like, of them not div diversifying. And were China to do something similar to Taiwan, there would be, be a very similar consequence, as Ian says, but with not with natural gas, but with semiconductors. You know, uh, Taiwan is to global semiconductors what Russia is to nat natural gas, if you like. And so it's very important that that we you know we have been asleep at the wheel due to the peaceful globalized world in which we've been living in the last 20 or 30 years but it's very important that we take back control of important strategic assets and this is one of those max king your instincts are broadly free market you like international trade you got to have you had a distinguished career in international finance does your support for free markets stop here or would you say we should go ahead allowing china to take over newport wafer fab if indeed that's what newport wafer fab a privately owned company mm. wants to do 
Well, as uh, Ian and uh, Sir Ian and uh, Dominic imply, if the Chinese were buying it because they thought it was a great company, which through research and development and investment could become a better company, then there might be a strong case for it. If, on the other hand, they're buying it because they want to take, grab the technology uh, manufactured in China to advance what we should call their attack industries rather than their defence industries, um, then uh, that's, that should clearly be out of, quest, uh, out of the question. That is not free markets in operation. That is, um, that is uh, pilfering um, uh, technology which can only damage the rest of the, the, rest of the world. So I, you know, I think quite definitely this, this thing should be stopped. And perhaps, um, as Dominic implies, that uh, the uh, invasion of um, Ukraine should, wait, should wake, a, uh, wake us all up and stop um, giving the autocracies the benefit of the doubt. Uh, in the past, we might give them the benefit of the doubt, and I think that was prob- turns out with the benefit of hindsight to be wrong. But no, we should not give them the benefit of the, di- the doubt. We should, um, we should say, unless you can actually prove that it's for the world's good and our good that this company's taken over, the answer is absolutely no. Sir Ian, last word to you. This is in Kwasi Kwarteng's inbox now. The business secretary has got a lot on his plate with the global, the UK government's energy security strategy delayed, about to be published soon. What's your advice to Kwasi Kwarteng? What's your advice to Boris Johnson? Well, do as you said you would do. <clears throat> the reason we passed this legislation was that for it to be used. There's been no uncertain doubts about all of this. Russia has reminded us that if you deal with countries on the basis of how you wish they were rather than how they are, you will get your hands burned. China is set to become the largest economy in the world because the West has rushed to flood it with investment and money because they were able to do things cheaper. Under normal circumstances, that is a normal part of global, uh, global dealing, but not when you're dealing with autocracies. I mean, this is a government, for God's sake, that's committing genocide on the Uyghur people, slave labor, a lot of product made in China under slave labor. The Tibetans are in slave labor camps. The, the Uyghurs are in slave labor camps. They've possessed the South China Seas without any rights to it whatsoever. They've trashed the Sino-British agreement on Hong Kong, and they're arresting peaceful po- democracy campaigns, putting them in jail for life, often torturing them. I mean, this is not a government that we should be uh, assuming uh, is OK on these matters. We've now got to wake up. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a seriously dangerous position. Sir Ian Duncan-Smith, former Conservative leader, former Cabinet Minister, thanks so much again for joining us from the US on this important discussion about the future of British semiconductors.